Hey, my dear friends, here I am back with something that I said I was going to come back and read to you. And this one is not by me, the new me, saved by Jesus Christ on not the Damascus Road, but on my road. Would have disagreed with this prior to my Damascus Road experience, but I agree 100% with it now. And it doesn't sound like the old me at all, but y'all listen to this. This was written by somebody, initial R and last name Gibson, G-I-B-S-O-N. The title of it is, It's Going to Be Hot. And I don't know a date. It doesn't have a date. But I just found it today, and it's good, so I'm going to share it. And, and we need to take God seriously, y'all. We need to take our walk with Him seriously. Just listen. Weather forecasting can be tricky, but I am going to venture out on a limb and predict that June, July, and August will bring hot weather to North Alabama. I assume this R. Gibson is from North Alabama. I am going to predict that this hot weather will allow Note that I said allow, not require, many of the citizens of North Alabama to go out in rather skimpy attire. Obviously, I am being somewhat facetious about going out on a limb because unless the return of our Lord comes before summer, we will see some brutally hot days over the next few months. And unfortunately, the second prognostication is just as certain. Indecent dress will prevail. Of course, to identify a problem is one thing, while solving it is another. I'm reading off my computer. I, I saved this guy's message to the computer so I could read it easier than otherwise. Is there anything we can do about these problems of summer? When it comes to the weather, we will simply have to put up with it, and while we will never stop everyone from shedding their clothes, there is one thing we can do. We can refuse to take part in bare season. Let's consider carefully some principles that must guide us this summer, and for that matter, throughout the year. These are principles that involve a lot more than dress, but if they are not reflecting themselves in the way we dress, then we are not present as they ought to be. Vital principles. God has called us brother and sister, to be a holy people. Be holy, for I am holy. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 through 17. We are to flee sexual immorality. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. If anyone doubts that dress can be seductive and contribute to sexual desire, he or she should be required to explain the success of Victoria's Secret. And there's many others besides Victoria's Secret, friends. We are not to engage in lewd, lustful, lascivious, or licentious conduct. And we is speaking about true Christians. 
because we know everybody else is going to be. In our dress and in everything, let us walk properly, not in lewdness or lust. Romans chapter 13, verse 13, chapter 14, uh, verses 13 and 14 of chapter 13. 2 Corinthians 12, verses 20 and 21. And I have not verified the scripture references that he gave. I'm just assuming that they're applicable references. We must avoid putting a stumbling block before others. For whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be, re it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depths of the sea. Matthew chapter 18, verses 6 and 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 31, 32, and 33. Since looking at another person with lustful desire is sin, Matthew 5, 28, we must not allow our dress or lack thereof to be the stumbling block that causes another to stumble. We are called to be different, an influence for good, salt and light, and a corrupt world filled with darkness. We are striving to be children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Philippians 2, verses 15 and 16, Matthew 5, verses 13 and 16. And in the comment section of this video, I will list all these scripture references that this author shared with us and I just hope they're the right ones. <laughs> Are we willing to maintain a holy dedication to God that dares to be different in the way we dress? Are we going to refuse to dress in ways that satisfies the desires of those who have eyes full of adultery? Second Peter chapter 2 verse 14. Will our determination to avoid immorality, lust, and lewdness lead us to keep our clothes on? Will we dress in such a way as to lead to lust? Or will we, our choices, be as a light shining in the darkness? Let's be honest with their answers. Several years ago, I came up with six questions I believe everyone should ask before they leave their room. While a lot of different fashions have come and gone in the years since I first penned these questions, I still believe they are valid and offer them now for your careful consideration. Is it talking about the clothing attire? Is it too short? When fashion designers want to add sexual appeal, the display of the thighs usually seems to be where they start. Can I sit down and still retain my modesty? There may, may be shorts or dresses that are acceptable when one is standing, but don't forget that you will need to sit down at some point. Hint, if you find yourself continually tugging at the bottom of your shorts or your skirt, it's too short. Is it cut too low? Let's recognize that the fashion world refers to low-cut apparel as sexy and daring, never as modest, holy, and pure. Continually needing to pull up on your top, then it is too low. Is it too tight? Form-fitting clothes are made to display the attractiveness 
of the human form. Do we not see the problem with that? Let's save the spandex for undergarments, not outer ones. Is it too brief? Where is the sense of shame when men and women will appear in no more than Adam and Eve's fig leaves? Is it too sheer? Some fabrics may cover the body but still allow the skin and or underwear to be clearly visible. It will be hot this summer and many will dress indecently. But as we make our decisions about dress, we would do well to remember that there is a place that will be a lot hotter. All quotes from the new King James Version, copyright 1995, Thomas Nelson Publishing, Inc. And I will list all those scripture references down below. Friends, if we're to be faithful to God, and our God is a jealous God, we will flee from sexual immorality. And this place, such as described here, is sexual immorality. I lived on the Texas Gulf Coast. I loved going to the beaches. And what this guy's describing us all over the place down there. I, I finally picked a beach that was secluded where I didn't have to look at all of that. And back before I got saved, I loved looking at it. I would approach women that was dressed that way. But after I got saved, I couldn't look at it. I had to find a different beach where there was fishermen, fully dressed fishermen. And that's where I would go. And it was a beautiful beach. We've got to guard our hearts and our minds and our eyes as Christians and turn away from anything that causes us to sin and lusting after someone is a sin. Alright y'all, that's that for that one. Just be on guard, friends. Be on guard. The devil roams about seeking those whom he may devour. Don't let it be you.